Share Beirut presents Nadim Kbaisi, CryptoCat. Trying to make this full screen. View. <laughs> full screen mode. Great. Hi. Um, this is uh, a talk called Nadim Super Adventure. And it's about my super adventure around the world for the past year. It's also about CryptoCat, which is my cool project that I'm going to be talking to you about. Um, so yeah, I'm back. I am actually Lebanese. Yatikon lafie. As a maftar for English, fi kontech doshi bitarjim, bas jabaruni ahki English la anu hon laalam tahki English ejmelan. But I'm going to continue in English. Uh, I'm only been in Canada for the past three years, four years, uh, three years. And I'm back uh, as a, a hiatus from my university education to communicate ideas, which I'm going to do today. So uh, the importance of uh, things like share, I think these things are extremely important. I'm currently missing class. I am barely going to arrive back in time to study for an exam because uh, this thing is worth much more. Uh, events like share are actually capable of establishing the internet and technology as a really viable infrastructure in a place in a city like Beirut, which really needs that to happen. We really need that to happen here. Because quite frankly, uh, this country has been through a lot of war. It already ha is, a lot, is, is going through a lot of uh, civil strife. And also, it is situated uniquely in a place that's sort of a, a vantage point for both Eastern uh, ideology and Western ideology. So we end up basically being the victims of uh, everyone. I mean, uh, you, you, you already know this. So. I want to talk to you about CryptoCat, but I also want to talk about the larger uh, context of CryptoCat, which is an event like this, and the, and the surrounding culture, which is hacker culture, which is the culture of uh, using technology, using uh, technology for artistic, for political, for civil society, for cultural initiatives, which is exactly what Beirut needs. This is exactly an infrastructure that can bring us together, that can make us um, really do a lot of interesting things and establish and take back our civil society. Um, and ultimately, I want to tell you that without, without you know, like being a Steve Jobs wannabe, that uh, CryptoCat is just one iteration of what every single group of friends here should be doing. That is my mission. So CryptoCat, I'll talk about that first since it's, you know, there's, there's the logo on every one of the slides. It's uh, my project. It's just like Facebook chat or Google Talk. Uh, it's an instant messaging client that works in your browser, MSN Messenger. But the difference is that it's, it uses encryption. It uses pretty good encryption uh, in the sense that you can use it to chat with your friends very normally, but all the messages are encrypted in your browser before being sent to someone else or even leaving your computer screen. And so that makes it so that even I, the CryptoCat developer or the other developers cannot see what you are discussing. Uh, it also makes it so that the messages hopefully cannot be intercepted by other third parties. And so what CryptoCat does is that it makes encryption technology, which has usually been extremely difficult to use, only meant for militaries and spies and what have you, uh, usable to talk to your girlfriend about stuff. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's, it's useful for anything. And so that's the point, it's to bring privacy technologies that were previously inaccessible to be accessible to everyone. Uh, and you don't need to be a super master hacker to use it. So now it's cartoon time, and I'm going to show you a CryptoCat cartoon. Uh, yep, thank you.
that's basically it. It goes on for a while. But thank you. I'm glad you like it. Some, some people complained that it was too long, uh, namely Hadi, basically. He's somewhere around here. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a nice little cartoon. And CryptoCat has this 8-bit aesthetic that I really like because it uh, was basically my childhood because my mom uh, spoiled me by buying me a computer when I was four. And I had to, I had to learn how to use it myself, though. Uh, she's in the audience. Um, so what happened with that is that I made this project, and it really sucked at first because I sucked at programming. And so if any uh, of my friends abroad hear this, that's me admitting that I sucked at programming at first. But uh, the hacker community caught wind of CryptoCat. And uh, they thought it was an interesting project. They managed to get it funded by a nonprofit. And suddenly, I was traveling the world uh, <laughs> uh, very unprepared, learning how to make CryptoCat great. Because I was meeting with a lot of people who I had, I mean, in some instances, even idolized when I was a kid. Because they were part of an information freedom movement. They were technically capable people who knew how to program, knew how to secure uh, computer systems, knew how to, knew how to basically fuck with intelligence agencies. And uh, this is what I wanted to do uh, with CryptoCat. I wanted to make it so that it would be something that people could rely on, on their privacy, more than they can rely on their own government for their privacy. So what happened was that I met with those people that have a mission. The mission of those people, they, they're, they're 20, late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, uh, year, year old people who have taken it upon themselves to make the mission to, to make internet culture, to make information freedom, to establish a culture of innovation throughout the internet that is worldwide, that is absolutely meritocratic. And they guard the integrity, uh, the intellectual, the moral integrity of that movement, and they spend full time their lives doing so. And those people, I mean, here in Beirut, I wouldn't be surprised if you had just heard about those people in books, because that's, that, that was the case for me until I traveled. But those people, a lot of them are spending their weekend in Beirut right now. And this is not something that happens usually. And this is why you should take full advantage of this uh, opportunity. This is why share is important. This is why it's important to bring this culture here. Because people who are of that initiative can really change this, uh, the, the cultural fabric and improve the civil society fabric of this country because they know how to do it worldwide. People like the Tor Project, which was mentioned in the previous talk, and I thought it was excellent that it was mentioned. The Tor Project, its usage can be directly related to revolutionary activity in Iran and Egypt and Syria. People use Tor more on the same hour, on the same day that more protests happen. And Tor, as you saw in the previous talk, is an anonymity network that makes it so that you can use the internet anonymously, uh, more securely, and uh, even circumvent censorship. And it's, uh, I owe a lot to the people at the Tor project for how much they've helped with CryptoCat. Also, the Guardian project, which does uh, mobile phone security. GlobalLeaks, which is trying to make it so that anyone can launch their own WikiLeaks. And they can do, it so, they can do so securely, because the people at GlobalLeaks are taking every single step to making it so that it's both easy to deploy but also actually secure because they're professionals at this sort of thing. And all of those projects are just like CryptoCat, they are open. All the research is available for free. You can see the code for free. You can, um, the, the, you can look at the research yourself and you can verify. And you can criticize Tor or CryptoCat or any of those projects if they fail to meet your security standards. And I mean, CryptoCat itself is, is, has been criticized a lot, especially by those people who helped improve it. We solved many problems. We made CryptoCat's encryption more reliable by relying on, on standards that have, been uh, that have been under development for many years, such as the off-the-record encryption protocol uh, designed mainly by Ian Goldberg. We also made its delivery to your browser more secure. So when CryptoCat is sent to your browser, uh, it is delivered as a browser extension, and that uh, prohibits it from, from the CryptoCat code being um, manipulated by, by sources as it arrives to your computer. And this wouldn't have been possible had it not been for the guidance of people like the Tor Project. And this is the culture that, th 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 this is the sort of environment that this hacker culture inspires. It teaches people how to teach other people how to teach themselves and how to improve themselves. And if you can spread this technical ideology worldwide, you can see people who want infrastructure to support their civil society, their artistic uh, am ambitions, this can start happening. And I'm addressing here my childhood friends. I'm addressing people that I know, know growing up, people that I met in university, people that hated me for my entire stay in Beirut. All of them had in common, they wanted a better infrastructure 
for a better social expression, better freedom of expression, better civil society, better accountability of government. I've met people here who want to start a hackerspace, and this wasn't a reality when I left this country three years ago, and that's why I left this country three years ago. But I'll come back to that later. I want to, I want to just close off on CryptoCat and say that because of this, it's maturing into a, into a gold standard. It works on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. It's available in 22 languages, and it's used by 80,000 different individuals every month these days, which, which is something that I really am very proud of. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so this is just a screenshot of CryptoCat uh, in Arabic. Because uh, I, I really, it, it took us a while to do this, but we translated it in 22 languages. It's like an old yes commercial. So, every time I read Arabic on a, on a website, I read it in like the old uh, commercials I used to see on Teleliban when I was a kid. And this is uh, the uh, lolcat translation. I can have private conversations. Uh, I don't know how many of you get that joke. You know, lolcats? Never mind. Uh, and this is just a screenshot of what a <laughs> typical CryptoCat chat looks like. So this is, you know, CryptoCat 2, the new version. As you can see here, there's like a, uh, a conversation list that you can have private conversations if you click on someone, or a group conversation if you click on the group conversation thing. And uh, it's, you know, pretty cool. There's a lot of features, and it looks nice. Because it's important for things to look nice so that people actually use them. Because if you go to uh, a country X and you teach people how to use software Y because it'll save their lives, they won't use it if it requires two hours of training for everyone, for everyone else that needs to use it. And then people will slash, die, tortured, whatever, or terrible consequences. So that's something that I'm trying to address. That's not to say that CryptoCAD is ready to be used in those countries. Um, I don't because I, I simply don't know. It might be, but I don't know because I haven't tested it yet. I don't know if CryptoCat is ready to be entrusted with your life. I, it probably isn't because it's only a year and a half old, and Tor is actually 11 year old. It turned, 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 sorry, turned 10 in September. So this technology provides pretty good encryption, pretty good privacy, but we just don't know how good it is because we haven't have it, had it deployed in too many places yet. Out of we, we're just we're just scared. We don't want people. We don't we, we don't want to promise people false hope. So we're very open, transparent, but also slow and careful with our development process. We're already, some people think we're not careful at all, but uh, we do our best. Uh, so CryptoCat, you know, segueing, is a civil society technology. Technology because, because this technology can serve as an infrastructure for the support of any civil society initiative إذا أنا بدي المجتمع المدني لحتى ما بعرف يصير أرجيلة أرخص أو بدي مجتمع مدني لحتى سرع على الإنترنت أو بدي مجتمع مدني لحتى جاري يزيح سيارته من قدام باب بيتي ما بعرف. Uh, this is technology that can help us justify ourselves as a society. And this is really, I mean, this is what I'm going to do. من هلا لموت يعني هذا هيك رح أنا رح أعمل بحمل هيك عم زنخ عليكم. بس um, People like you can use the technology to support the rights of everyone, including yourselves and your friends. And the marvelous thing about this technology is that there are no borders. There are no linguistic borders. I'm speaking in English and you're understanding me. There are no geographic, linguistic, or cultural borders. A cultural slightly, actually. Cultural is the biggest one. But it's still small compared to Jarit um, al-Nahar. So, hayla Jarit, not Jarit al-Nahar. Um, so who uses CryptoCat? 80,000 people, who are they? School teachers, human rights workers, uh, the gay people in countries that don't like gay people, uh, journalists, your friends, anyone. But it's not, it's, this is not about CryptoCat's user base. This is about the user base of any technology that you can make that is like CryptoCat. You can make anything as long as, it, uh, as, long as you uh, publish it openly. It will get reviewed by people who are 20 million times as good as I am. And that's what happened to me, and that's what can happen to you. So CryptoCat would have never matured if, if to anything good if it weren't for the hacker community. And the hacker community can change CryptoCat from like miserable uh, code uh, with uh, you know, a, a number of like Midricam uh, universal variable that can be accessed in, in, in code based in, uh, like two, two comments throughout like 5,000 lines of code. And it can change Beirut from, from you know, my code sucked, it became better. Beirut sucks, can become better, I don't know. Um, 
So this, what I just told you is a story about technology, society, and civil awareness, uh, and political enabling, all those things coming together to form one big thing that everyone uses, 80,000 people. So why don't you? You can do this. And political science and this is, yeah, uh, slides to all repetitive. For one story out of many, everyone, every one of you should do this, and that's what hacker culture is about. And this is also what hacker culture is about. Hada Biarif had a logo. Yes! It's a hundred thousand, it's a full, it's a hundred thousand. Let me fail it. Let me be in. When you listen to them, on. These guys are Lumba Labs. They are Lebanon's first hacker space. A hacker space is a place that is not just for the third thing in your heart. You want to go and do something like that. You want to go home in a warm place. There's a place where people like you. And this is, this is what I'm trying to do. There, there's a place of people like you that can meet up and they have the same goals that you have. And they want to learn the same things you want to learn. And they want to learn what you know that they don't know. And you want to learn what they, what they know and what you don't know. And you can combine and you can have a democratic process where you can reach conclusions about things that you want to learn and etc. And I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to re repeat myself because I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. And if you don't, please, I have a like, one hour QA session. You can ask me whatever you want. Um, so Lamba Labs, you should go talk to Mark Farra. Mark, Mark. Mark! Tatla! Ajil, yalla! Yalla! Okay, this is Mark Farra. He's awesome. Look, he's so cute. Okay, so, uh, and yeah, Maya, come on. I don't talk about it, but yalla, I'll have to so uh, these two are the directors of Lamba Labs. Please talk to them. They're very identifiable. Mark is especially identifiable. So, um, <laughs> uh, and I really suggest you, you, I'm just bringing them on stage. They're going to give a talk, actually. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Um, but that's about it. Um, I am actually, oh, by the way, uh, shame, uh, more shameless plugs. Uh, I am uh, performing tonight at the after party. I, have a, I actually used to be a DJ for three years before starting working on CryptoCat. And uh, I am uh, performing a set at Yukonkon at 1 a.m. It's going to be really amazing. I would use a lot of metaphors to explain it, but half of them are psychedelic and the other are sexual, so I won't. But um, you should really come. It's at Yukonkon tonight at 1 a.m. Uh, other than that, uh, cute cartoon and end of story. Thank you.